amygdala. That one was probably the toughest one. What have you got in uh, the word amygdala? Well, you do have a mig. Now, if you know what a mig is, kind of an attack plane, which might work for you if you're comfortable with that. <clears throat> what does the amygdala, the amygdala do? It primarily uh, regulates our sense of fear. Okay, so if you imagine a, 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 a mig flying towards you, that would scare you. And that would help you remember that the amygdala is about uh, regulating fear. Okay, now if the, the idea of a, a mig doesn't really work for you, you're not into military type stuff, then the other possibility is to look at the word and think about things that rhyme with it. So what rhymes with mig? Well, this right here, a wig, okay? So, a wig. Now, that's all fine and good. How are you going to associate wig with fear? Well, you'd have to get yourself, of course, a scary wig, like this one. Okay, this one. That's right. A scary wig. Now, that's mig, wig. There's another part to the word amygdala, though, and that's the last part, dala. D-A-L-A. -A. Now, what can you do with that? Well, you know, somebody might come up to you and say, hey, uh, excuse me, have you got a dollar? Right? So, what you'd have to do is get yourself, where are my dollars? There they are. Get yourself some dollars and associate them with the wig. All right, so I'm going to put some uh, dollars on here. And I'm going to just uh, associate them with the wig. So there we go. We got a wig with dollars, and these are actually $100, but uh, we won't pay any attention to that. All right, we got a couple of dollars over here, which makes the wig even more bizarre. This is a very strange wig here. It's got dollars all over it. Very scary, okay? That is a wig dollar. Okay, very scary. Yes, indeed. A wigdala. Scary stuff. Okay, next. Now, how about pons? P O N S. Now, this one's not too hard because you have uh, a word that looks like pons. Just throw a D in there, and you have the word pons. Now, what does the pons do? Well, interestingly, the pons regulates uh, relaxation, so it helps you to relax and, and sleep as well. So all you have to do then is use your imagination and imagine that you are uh, lying next to a pond and you're relaxing. <sighs> Oh, oh, sorry about that. I was relaxing, thinking about a pond. Okay, that's what the ponds does. Next, cerebellum. All right, there, not too hard. Right in the middle of cerebellum, a bell, right? So that's kind of, the other, otherwise I don't see anything else in there. The cerebellum, okay? Fine, you say, but what does a cerebellum do? Cerebellum is involved with balance and motor control. And so you have to think about that. What would I do with that? A lot of books refer to athletes uh, and athletic ability associated with the cerebellum. So what you could do is you could imagine you're an athlete that you think a lot about, someone that you're a fan of, and that person has a lot of bells, right? So picture bells maybe hanging off of that person. All right, so associate Bell with an athlete, maybe a dancer, someone, maybe someone who walks across ropes and across two buildings, right? There's a lot of balance involved there. That would help you out. Maybe you want to put a, a, a bell on someone's head, right? And they're trying to balance the bell on the head, and that's what will help you with cerebellum. Okay, we're getting towards the end. Reticular formation. It's kind of a tough one. You look at reticular formation, what do you see? Well, 
right in the middle is the word tickle, okay? And so, for example, we just happen to have a, a doll here that may help us memorize this. Because what does the reticular formation do? Well, it has to do with alert and arousal, right? So if you're driving a car and a deer comes up in front of you and you go like this, and you're suddenly more alert. That's the reticular formation. So, tickle, all right? Well, this right here, you may recognize this. This is a famous, uh, famous uh, person in the history of psychology. This, of course, is Sigmund Freud, all right? And this sort of looks a lot like, if you, if you go to his office, pictures of his office in Vienna, uh, you would see that his couch looks a little bit like my daughter's uh, groovy girl's bed. So here he is. So here's what you're imagining. Here's Freud. Now he's between patients. He's lying down. He's taking a nap, all right? And somebody comes along. Maybe that person has a feather, you know? And they tickle him. So they tickle Freud, all right? This is the... <laughs> Okay, so if you were to tickle Freud, if you were to tickle Freud while he was asleep, his reticular formation would wake him up and he would say, hey, what is going on around here? Or something like that. Okay, there you go, reticular formation. Last one, medulla. Okay, look in the word medulla. What do you see? Medal. All right, just happen to have some medals here. All right. Here's a gold medal. Of course, it's a fake gold medal. I got a bunch of these gold medals. Here you go. I'm gonna oh, take this off, put these on. A bunch of gold medals. Now, what does the medulla do? Well, the medulla regulates, among, among other things, the heart and lungs. And here are these medals, and they're right over my heart and lungs. So if you were to think of that, Maybe you think of, of uh, Michael Phelps in the recent Olympics. All the medals, right? All the medals are over the heart and lungs. Metal, medulla, metal, heart and lungs. One last way to memorize it, this right here. Maybe we'll get a good picture of that right there. All right, how about that picture? This is a jello heart. You can see it's jello like that. There, there you go, jello heart. Uh, kind of disgusting. But if, if, what the other thing you can do, though, is associate your medals with the heart. And what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to stick the medals right into the heart there. Right there, going to stick them in there. Going to stick the medal over there. I'm going to stick a medal over there. And there you go. Medals in a heart. Well, that's kind of disgusting, and that's one of the keys to mnemonics, make it disgusting. Hope this helps you to memorize the parts of the brain. Remember all these things, go over them, and on the website www.thepsychfiles.com, I'll have a list of all these mnemonics, and you can download it from there. Okay, thanks a lot. Hope you found this fun and useful. See you next time on The Psych Files.